Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thank you very much for checking out today's video. And we've got a really good video for you guys today. We're gonna to have a deep dive into how to catch and find bass during the pre-spawn period of the year, which is just right around the corner, man. It's just like at the time of filming, this video is done in the second week of January. So um, pre-spawn, it, it's gonna be starting pretty soon, you know, depending upon what part of the country you're in. It can start as early as, you know, late January, but for most people, the pre-spawn is sort of that February, early April time period. So um, we're gonna go into some detail about some techniques that are really gonna work good to you guys uh, during that time of the year. And also guys, I will put in the uh, description of this video, I will put my Tackle Warehouse link in there to all some of the top pre-spawn lures I'd suggest. Um, I've got about, probably a half a dozen of them that really have produced well for me over the years. So I'll link them in the description if you guys want to check those out. It's a good way to support the channel. So much appreciated with that. Okay, guys, this uh, this little mini seminar I'm going to give on the pre-spawn, this is for real bass fishing. This is not, doesn't have any application to live scoper. If you're a live scoper, just do your normal deal and go out in the lake and just put your video game on and roam around out in the middle of the lake. This is for actual bass fishing as far as the techniques, approaches, and the movements of uh, bass, you know, during the pre-spawn and that, and that uh, genre there. So we're gonna get into that. Now, first of all, what, what is the pre-spawn exactly? What is, what is it encompassing everything? The pre-spawn period, in my opinion, now there's a lot of different definitions, but this is sort of the way that I have defined it from my own experience. It starts when you start having a incremental, gradual, and consistent rise in the water temperatures accompanied, or accompanied along with the increasing daylight hours. Now, depending, again, depending upon, you know, your latitude and longitude, it's going to be at a different time. But usually what happens is by, you know, by late February, you start noticing um, a little bit of a trend towards a little bit warmer temperatures. It's not quite as cold as the night warming up a little bit in the daytime um, and for me the pre-spawn really starts when you start having like a, a about a consistent one degree water temperature warm-up in your lake every single week now the water temperature warm-up one of the things you got to remember about this guys is don't ever during the pre-spawn measure your water temperature like back in shallow water in a cove because you might have one of those days where it's abnormally warm and uh, sun's beating down on some shallow water in the back of the cove and the water may be five, seven, eight degrees warmer than it is out on the main lake there. So from that standpoint, you always wanna measure your water temperature um, you know, out on the main lake first thing in the morning. That's the, the main thing with that. So given that, um, once that water temperature starts increasing about one degree per week, that you're starting to pre-spawn a little bit. And for me, the, the heart of the pre-spawn, and that's really, really what I wanna talk about in this video because this would be a two hour long video if we covered every aspect of it. But if I wanna talk, I don't want, there's, there's three parts of the pre-spawn. There's early pre-spawn, mid pre-spawn, and late pre-spawn. And the main pre-spawn I wanna talk about today is what I consider the heart of the pre-spawn. And that's when that water temperature is in that range of about say 52 to 57 degrees. This is the prime time to target pre-spawn fish. And guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, I bet 80% of the big ones I've caught over my entire life, I'm talking about fish over seven pounds, I bet 80% of those fish have came when that water temperature was between, you know, low to upper 50s. That is the time that the big fish move shallow. And this is why it's so good that time of year, because what you have is you've got these big fish that are scattered all over the lake. Some of them are suspended, some of them are deep, some of them are whatever. But when the pre-spawn really, really takes hold, you know, when that water temperature is five or six degrees, you know, right before they start spawning, that's when you have the largest number of big fish uh, shallower than any time. And hold on one second, guys, I gotta get Sage. She just ran out of the house, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. I got a text from Kim while I was doing the video that said that Sage was out, so I had to go get her rounded up there. So, but anyway, what I was saying is that the, you have a larger percentage of the quality fish up in that shallow water, like water that's less than five to seven feet deep. During that time, that short period, this is like a two week period that this goes on than any other time of the year. This is the time you wanna be fishing. If there's, guys, if there's any time frame that you can go fishing, pay attention to when your lakes get between say 52 and 57 degrees on the main lake, and that's when you need to be on the water there. 
Now, one the, I'm gonna give you guys some tips and advice on some things that work really good here as far as the areas that you wanna look for and uh, you know techniques and stuff that works for it. Now, first of all, I wanna, I wanna talk briefly just a little bit about grass lakes and then I wanna spend most of the time on the man-made lakes. Um, the pre-spawn, you know, movement on a grass lake, whether it be in Florida or Texas or, a, you know, a, a lake like some of the TVA lakes out there, those fish that relate to that grass out there are usually on those more, the main lake flats, close to some type of creek channel or ditches. So one of the things you want to look for in a grass lake is, you know, that those flats are in five to eight foot of water that have some channels and ditches running through those flats because those pre-spawn females will relate to those shallower, you know, flats on there close to those ditches, especially if there's any type of stumps around, access to deep water, and especially if they're positioned close to some type of a spawning bay. So uh, th those three factors are gonna be the key for grass lakes. And then your lures like your, you know, half ounce and three quarter ounce lipless crankbaits, big one ounce spinner baits, uh, jerk baits, A-rigs, that type of stuff. Some crankbaits are gonna be really good. And, like I said, I'll put all my favorite uh, lures for pre-spawn in the description of the video there. But what I really wanna talk about is the man-made lakes, because that's what most guys fish out there as far as specific type of areas. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find out about pre-spawn bass during that phase is they want to be around a little bit steeper bank areas. And I don't mean like bluffs or something like that, although bluffs can be decent for that. Best places for me are like, 45 to 60 degree angle banks that are leading into some type of spawning area, like a close by. So a prime example would be, is if you have, say if you're back in one of your major creek arms in the lake you fish, and you get on that channel bank, you know, the steepest bank within that creek, and maybe up in front of you, maybe a couple hundred yards, there's a nice cove up there that maybe has got some sh shallow flat water in the back of that cove where it's a good spawning area. One of the prime areas to look for bass are on that steep bank leading to that shallow spawning area up there. Bass love those steep banks and they also love any type of irregular outcroppings or secondary points that may exist on there. So pay attention to like some little points, you know, if you're back in the creek and you've got, you know, some steep banks, the little outcroppings, any irregular feature on there is going to be really, really good for those pre-spawn bass. Now, the lure selection is going to be based upon a couple different things. It's gonna be based upon the water clarity, and it's gonna be based upon, again, the type of rock that I'm fishing on there. Um, my favorite pre-spawn lures that I like to fish, number one is a slow roll and a big spinner bait. Um, like a three-quarter or one-ounce spinner bait with like a, number, like a number seven willow leaf blade, just slow rolling it down those steep banks like they're just throwing it to the bank, you know, just fishing it slow, fishing it, you know, anywhere between you know, foot to three feet off the bottom, depending upon the angle of the bank there. Um, a big spinner bait, guys, what gets you a big pre-spawn bite? It's probably, I would guess that a big spinner bait, in my opinion, is the number one pre-spawn bait, but you have to have the right conditions for that. In order for that big spinner bait to work in the pre-spawn, you need to have some type of a low light day, like, you know, some type of a cloudy or at least 80% over, 80% cloud coverage and you usually need some wind, like a you know 10 to 15 mile an hour wind, preferably out of the south. If you get a day when that water temperature is 55 degrees and you got a cloudy day with some wind, guys, put you a big spinnerbait on. I don't care where you're fishing, that's gonna be a really good choice. Second lure that's gonna be my favorite pre-spawn lure on those same type of areas is a full-size jig with a large trailer, like you know my 5 8 ounce block of old school jig or any type of 5 8 ounce jig usually with a large trailer, like that Zoom Super Chunk, a big salty chunk, something like that. Not a finesse jig, but a large profile jig, usually in some type of a natural color with some orange in it, whether it be green pumpkin and orange, peanut butter and jelly and orange, brown and orange, but I like to have some type of an orange in the, the jig skirt itself out there. And the trailer is usually something like a green pumpkin or a watermelon or something like that, but that big jig will get you a good bite too. Next would be some type of a crawdad crankbait, something like a wiggle wart, some type of medium, uh, medium diving, six to eight foot, you know, crawfish pattern crankbait. Um, doesn't have to be big, it can be just a regular size, you know, two to three inch crankbait. But a crankbait in those same areas is another good way to catch them. You can catch some big ones on a crankbait, but a crankbait in a crawdad pattern is probably 
one of the best ways to catch numbers of good fish as far as lots of three and four pounders if they do exist in your lake. Next one, if the water cl if the water clarity is a little bit, and, and those guys also in those is the, uh, the spinner bait and the jig is gonna be for when your water visibility is like say under three and a half foot and the crank bait is gonna be more for it's like uh, over three and like that. Another good clear water lure is gonna be a jerk bait. Um, a larger jerk bait, something like that, either the Mega Bass, like a 110 plus one, Mega Bass Edo Shiner, you know, the big rogue, something like that. Fishing that on those same steeper channel banks, uh, long, making long cast parallel. A lot of times in that clear water, those big fish, um, they, will, they will gravitate between sitting on the bottom shallow in like five to eight foot of water and maybe suspending out, not very far and not, not deep, but suspending maybe three or four feet underwater in maybe five or six foot of water. That's a, a really, really good way to catch big ones on that. Also, that, that you can't, you know, the Alabama rigs, the same deal. It's good, it could get you a good bite in that situation too. But anyway, guys, the main thing, I don't, without getting into a big old long video here, main thing is I want you to remember is uh, pay attention to that water temperature, you know, low to upper 50s, get on the 45 to 60 degree angle steeper banks, preferably with some type of larger rock on it. And then, uh, you know, ta target that sort of that three to seven foot zone with those lures that I mentioned in there. And uh, your odds of catching a big one go way up if, if all that stuff uh, comes into play together. So hope it helps guys. We'll talk later. See you.